This shows you as heavy as I was. How loud are you? About 280. 18 plus percent of our children right now are obese. If you go with the flow in America today, you will end up overweight or obese, as two thirds of Americans do. I don't want to be fat for the rest of my life. I've got diabetes. Sleep apnea. High blood pressure. I get dizzy when I get up. Everything's hurting now. We don't now take this as a really serious, urgent national priority. We are all of us individually and as a nation going to pay a really serious price. It will take research on a wide variety of platforms to understand all the factors that play into obesity and what interventions actually work. The National Institutes of Health, as the world's largest supporter of biomedical research, is profoundly invested in trying to understand the causes and the ways to intervene that will be successful. The National Institutes of Health is our major research agency and devotes a considerable amount of resources towards research in this country more than any other country in the world. When you piece together the whole portfolio of scientific endeavors that the NIH has really put together to study cardiovascular disease and, and now more recently to study obesity, it tells an undeniable story. The NIH is the lead agency in the United States for health research. The Clinical Center is the largest hospital in the world devoted solely to clinical research. We have the ability to work across interests and disciplines so that if you have a question that one of your colleagues isn't an expert on, it's very likely that by looking a few floors away, you'll find somebody who is truly one of the world's experts that you can then go talk to. Now, you can see that breathing tube? That's at the end of the measurement. When I close the door, I'll do a couple of measurements of your, of your body volume, okay? Let's close the door. The causes for obesity basically fall into two categories, increased energy intake, increased food intake, and less energy expenditure, less physical activity. And at the metabolic unit of the clinical center, we have one of the world's best places for studying both metabolic rate and food intake. Okay, we're gonna bring your breakfast soon. Just give us a call. We have particular chambers where the metabolic rate is monitored uh, for 24 hours. We can monitor metabolic rate on a second-to-second -second basis all the way up to a 24-hour basis.
there is a lot of literature out there about various different diets and how hungry people feel and how they're adapting to those different diets, both from the metabolic perspective as well as these behavioral things. There's a lot of anecdotes out there about when people go on a low-carb diet, they might crave a certain kind of food. There's just very little scientific evidence out there why that happens or even if that happens on a general basis. What I'm interested in is how is it that when people go on these different kinds of diets, their metabolism somehow adapts. What we're particularly interested in is uh, looking at the brain activity when you are on either a reduced fat or a reduced carbohydrate diet. Right. Because we really want to understand how changes in your diet lead to changes in your brain activity. So if you look right up here, you can see here's the bore of the scanner and he's been pulled into the, the center of the magnet. And what's being projected to him are these images here. Certain foods are more interesting to us, they are more pleasurable to us because we, um, in the course of our evolutionary history, they were more important to our survival. Just prior to These are foods that are high in fat, high in carbohydrate, and if you ate those foods, you were more likely to survive. Was my brain more responsive to something that was more pleasurable than something that was neutral or not as pleasurable? That's absolutely the case, and in fact, that's what this image shows. So this shows the activation people papers. will volunteer their time and their energy to participate in a study which is not pleasant at all times. Yeah. And we are really thankful for that. One of the things that we, uh, that we did was we measured your uh, body fat percentage. And what we found... So right now our state of knowledge of obesity is in the, I would say, the early mid-stage. So now the question is, what do we do from here? We can actually but the better we understand the underlying physiology, the better we're going to do on its treatment, uh, whether it be pharmacologic or behavioral or even societal. It's going to take a combination of rigorous research to understand the causes and also to identify interventions that work, and also a national recognition that this is a priority. The NIH, focused through an obesity task force, is engaged on all of those fronts and trying to generate the kind of data that will then inform going forward a real public health campaign uh, to assist our nation to deal with this pressing problem. <laughs>